I like your shirt, man. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. What a great movie, man. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. I, I will always you, love that movie. So well, re- if you recall the first time we met Ryan, he had a great shirt too. Do you remember um, that? Uh, oh, uh, we have photographic. Do we have photographic proof? We do. I'm not sure about the fr- about the shirt. Oh, oh, I know what it is. Can I? Oh, Scott, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Deadly Spawn, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Which yeah. I was familiar with because of the uh, the brothers Hildebrand. Which one of them was involved in in that? One or both of them? Gosh, I don't know. All I remember is uh, John Dodds, was it? Who helped yeah. with the creature effects? And yep. I can't remember who directed it or made it, but... Yeah. Good I, for them. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I was one of those guys, and I was always familiar with their work because of their Lord of the Rings paintings in the 70s and, you know, all oh, that really? stuff. Yeah. Um, That's how I know them. Yeah, and so when I, when I saw that one or both of them was involved in making this movie... I, I immediately fell in love with the idea, even before I saw the movie. And I, I love the practical effects. I love the miniatures. The oh miniatures. yeah, you know that's that's classic old school stuff right there. You know, have you seen? There's a making of uh, on one no. of the DVDs. Plastic, yeah, it's really good. No, oh, really. Like, oh. uh, the little like the little like little spermy babies, you know, whatever yeah. they they made yeah. like this crack and like three quarter inch plywood that had like you know a swivel in it. And they had the, the I think wow. it, was, it was hot melt vinyl or whatever they were made of, but they just pulled it and it underwater. They had about this much water, so you couldn't see the track underneath it with blood and everything. And then it just looked like it was, you know, swimming. That's the, the fantastic. So clever. Oh, that's, that's extremely great. clever. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because the swimming, just, they look let's great. Let's not do this thing. Let's just go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that right now. So, Ryan, how have you been? Anyhow. Uh, you know, <laughs> is that a shitty question to ask anybody at this point in time? I know. How have you been? I mean, good God, it's so yeah. bizarre. I mean, what a, oh man. Yeah. It's yeah. been, it, it's been nice to, uh, you know, have some time to redo like my apartment, you know, like clean it and organize and all that stuff. But yeah, as far as work, it's dead. Everything is gone, yeah. you know, like both yeah. jobs. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, on that note, why don't we start? (laughs) (laughs) I think we did just start. Folks, this is uh, Dave Geister with the Monster Movie Happy Hour. And uh, we're doing one of our monstrous musing episodes, which is to say we don't have to delve into a movie. We have the uh, the pleasure of, of a special guest. Uh, before we get to our special guest, uh, we're just going to briefly introduce, uh, let's see, where's Scott Cheeseborough? Scott's Hello. Scott's of the crew. And there's Mary Chalman looking absolutely like uh, uh, a Serbian peasant or something, which I highly approve. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, 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 I meant <laughs> it as a compliment of some kind. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to be assassinating any world leaders lately, though. Oh, thank goodness! Yeah, there we go. I got. Served. He didn't say Serbian. He didn't say Serbian anarchist. No, I said. Well, that. let's. It's me, though. <laughs> it could be. Oh, okay. Uh, Fair enough. Our, our special guest this time around is Ryan Shadley. Uh, there's Ryan. Hey. Yeah. You know, um, Scott and I met you a couple of years ago when you were working on the special makeup effects for the zombies movie down in Oatana. And um, we instantly were enamored of, of uh, not just your awesome t-shirt, uh, <laughs> but um, well, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great one too. But, but uh, the, the, the amazing way you were able to just pull off all those, those um, zombie effects using your airbrush. Uh, it was, it was, it was so impressive to watch. And, um, so we immediately fans and then we started stalking you online. Uh, <laughs> and whenever we would bump into you somewhere, we go, oh, there's Ryan Shannon. Uh, <laughs> yes. Didn't, didn't we bump yeah, into yeah, other into that John Carpenter, uh, that John Carpenter concert? What? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Yes. And Mary was with us, but I don't think we got a chance to introduce you guys at the time. Yeah, that was, I had been- that was one of my favorite outings with Dave and Scott, I think, ever, because John Carpenter did his little old man dance. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, God. 
seeing all the stuff projected behind him, you know, like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so cool. So oh, cool. it really like, was. Great show. was. Absolutely. God, I wish we could go back and do that again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, will we, when will we be able to have crowds of over 20 in an enclosed space again? Yeah. Not with Jack Carpenter. He's precious cargo. Keep yeah. him away from everybody. Exactly. Put him in like a Pope mobile and, you know. Right? <laughs> yeah. Except yeah. it needs to look like the taxi from Escape from New York. But uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's not a bad idea, Dave. Uh, which may probably be one of the worst practical car exploding effects I've ever seen, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still worth it. So yeah. enough about us. So uh, Ryan, actually, we would just love to hear you talk about anything you want to talk about. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess actually the first question I, I would like to ask is, yeah, as you can tell, how did you, what, come to this. Two, two questions are, so what, what inspired you to take this career track, if you will, and, and then, how did you break into the business per se? Um, let's see. Gosh, well, you know, I grew up in the eighties and, uh, like probably many kids in the eighties, you know, seeing this, um, incredible, uh, practical effects work, you know, that really was the boom and the explosion yeah. of, uh, yeah. you know, really figuring out some amazing tricks and artistry. And uh, just a curiosity, like, how the hell did they do that? You know, like, I've been I, I'm so, I don't know, you know, like, why do some people like sports? Why do some people like uh, hunting? You know, I don't know. I just, I, it's weird. I always, maybe it's my religious, strict religious upbringing, but I've always been uh, interested in, you know, monsters and horror. And I guess I was a scared kid. Maybe it was a chance to try to figure out, you know, like, yeah. you know, to figure out the demons, you know what I mean? So they don't uh -huh. scare you or something. So anyway, but I've always been really, you know, artistically inclined and, um, you know, just wanted to transform myself. And, you know, I was doing like, you know, plaster of Paris on my face, you know, like when I was 10 years old, you know, and that was bad. How uh, many times did you get it stuck? Like, oh, yeah, I was stuck <laughs> with an eyelashes and my parents were like, you know, ready to like, you know, chip it off. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, it was, <laughs> if I'm going through this pain, I have to like, they've got to get something out of it, you know? So like, I finally, you know, cause it was rigid, you know, you're not supposed to put plaster on your face. So anyway, <laughs> I finally like got it off by like wiggling so hard um, and pulled half my eyebrows and eyelashes off. But I ended up with two black eyes cause it almost broke my nose from like, you know, going back and forth so much. Wow. So, um, uh, the next day or maybe two days later at school, my guidance counselor stops me in the hall. and is like, Ryan, is everything okay at school? I mean, at home. Is your home life okay? You know, I'm like, yeah, why? What's up? You know, I'm like, oh, this? Oh, no, no, that's just, you know, I, I, uh, you know, it's a long story, but it's, my parents are fine. So anyway, that was funny. But anyway, um, so yeah, I just kind of kept going with it. Um, you know, all through high school, I got pretty good. I was doing cable controlled, you know, dummies, you know, like you could move its eyebrows and like, I, you know, was eyes back and forth. And, um, and then Jurassic Park came out and, uh, that pretty much made me feel like, oh my God, you know, I was like, I don't know, 17 or something like that. And I'm like, wow, I think I just wasted oh. my career. You know, I don't know what to do, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was hard. So I went to college and then I got like a, you know, art major, philosophy minor. I was like, what am I going to do? Completely unemployable, you know? And, <laughs> and then I went to film school. So I was like, I'm just going to make movies. You know, I want to, I want to make movies. I want to be involved in the film industry somehow. So I went to film school in Chicago, but all the while I still kept, you know, like Halloween was always like a huge, you know, deal. I'd always go high elaborate and all my friends and stuff. And, um, you know, I'd still make weird little things on the side. And, and, uh, when I moved to Minneapolis after college, I, um, you know, I was making my own movies and they were all horror sci-fi themed, you know, and I do my own effects for them and all that stuff. And I think just enough people just meeting people in the film community, they just started, Oh, could you do that for my movie? You know? And so then it just, uh, kind of escalated, uh, into, you know, this whole thing. Um, you know, at first it's kind of just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're paying for materials, you know, like, woo, and then it's like, oh my God, they're paying for like, to do this for a living, you know what I mean? Or actually getting paid for this. And so now it's definitely different. It's really evolved, you know, into, uh, it really is now like, not enough 
business to live on. So it's certainly not now, yeah. but uh, it is pretty, pretty busy, you know? Um, and that's, there was, I guess, uh, it was getting pretty good there for a while. Yep. Um, but again, it just kind of escalated. I'd never really tried to sell or promote or anything like that. If, yep. if you were successful beyond your wildest dreams, would that require you to move to work closer to the industry, to California? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know anymore because I feel like Atlanta is such a big place now. Um, probably. But then when you get to that level of, there's a whole lot of things you got to do when you get to that level. Um, you know, union, you got to definitely join uh-huh. a union. That's hard. Sure. Um, um, you know, just to set up shops somewhere else. I mean, like, certainly I'm, I, I'm sure I could probably get work as, you know, like, I don't even know if Walking Dead is still a thing, but I could probably get a job as a one of the 20 makeup artists on The Walking Dead or something, you know what I mean, if I wanted uh-huh. to. Yeah. But, uh, but in this kind of day and age, you don't necessarily need to move close, you know? Like, I mean, I just worked on a movie in the fall in Ohio for six weeks, you know? So just kind of went out there and did it and came back, you know? So, yeah, yeah I don't know if you really need to. Yeah, I just wondered, not being, you know, being totally outside the industry, it just seems that eventually that if somebody gets to be really, you know, at the very top of the food chain, that they have to move out it, to California. It's possible. I mean, you know, if it turns out that, like, uh, you know, in the future, if for some reason, you know, movies come back the way they were, which I don't mm-hmm. think they will, um, at least for a long time, and, uh, you know, I just find that I'm like, say, going to, you know, California or Georgia all the time, you know, to work and stuff. And it's like my apartment is empty, then more empty than not, then maybe I would consider it, you know, but that uh-huh. seems like a long way out, you know. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that we've found through the podcast and with connecting people online is that there's a shockingly, like, robust horror community in Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was really been a revelation uh, to a large degree. It, it, you know, unless unless you're directly involved or you just discover it like we did, you 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 really don't know. Yeah, well, do you guys go to Crypticon? I assume. Not, the- no, not we were we were going to, but there were lots of things we were going to do this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like have a career. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we were set to go to um, Monster Palooza. We had the tickets and the whole thing, and we're so excited to just go and stare at people and their work. You know, <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. If Maybe that happens, year. I might try to go to Son of Monster Palooza in the fall if it's sort of back to normal. Maybe yeah. you know. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be or not. I mean, I gosh, I man. I mean, I'm I'm. I'm hoping that we'll we'll get. I, I would hope it was sooner, but I'm hoping that you know, best case scenario, we're we're back to something close to normal in a year or a year and a half. Yeah. Um, Big question. But who yeah. knows? What, who do, knows? what does one do to maintain? Well, I, I guess you know, trying to make a living, particularly in the creative field, is always challenging. And depending upon Which the is, of your work, you know, at this point, it, it, it can practically dry up. But, but maintaining also just your enthusiasm for the work uh, over the next year, you know, so you're ready when the, when, when, when the time comes. Yeah. Present its own challenges. But are, are, there, are there pet projects that you've been wanting to, oh, yeah. to do anyhow? And so, uh, you know, time and materials available – you got anything yeah. you're, you're tinkering around with? Yeah. Actually, last week, um, this has been on my bucket list for years and years and years. Um, but I finally bought my first uh, radio-controlled servo system uh, oh, last cool. week. Huh? Oh, you know, yeah. I can sit there with little joysticks and move little motors, you know, and stuff. And uh-huh. so that would be really, really fun is to, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe a mask, maybe a puppet. I'm not sure yet, you know, yeah. but something. Yeah. So I can like, you know, uh, you know, uh-huh. get like uh, and Ryan, with, with that particular setup, how many different um, articulations? Yeah, how many different? Arti- I mean, how many? You know, can, can you do like six different pieces all at yeah. the same time or something like that? Wow. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's the the control box that I got, 
yeah. the transmitter can do up to six motors, but only four at once. Okay. A switch, you know, so you could switch off, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. oh, you know, uh -huh. whatever. But then yeah. of the four simultaneous, you could, I mean, it's amazing what you can do. I mean, like, you know, say you want this, the up down to actuate two motors. Yeah. But the one motor, you only want a 70 degree angle of movement, but the other one, you want a 180 degree angle of movement, but you want them to reach their stop and end points at the same time. So one's faster, but one's, you know, does the, the bigger one, but this one, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you mm -hmm. can, yeah. yeah. It's, sure. it's fast. You could do. So say you want like a snarl. So you want like, you know, want this to go up and these to go down always, you know, so you can uh -huh. control like with one motor, you could control all four to oh, do like, wow. wow. Amazing. It's so not one motor, one control unit, I should say. So yeah. do you just spend a lot of time, this is a, kind of a strange question, but do you just spend a lot of time staring at people's faces? Yeah. And making <laughs> faces in the mirror? Yeah. And trying, yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to figure yeah. out what, it's like, all right, this muscle's anatomy. doing something. And... Yeah, anatomy, just uh, skin tone, colors, wrinkles. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of awkward. You know, you're at a restaurant, you're staring at like somebody like, oh, you know, it's probably, yeah. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. You have a really it's interesting uh, uh, freckling happening here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that with makeup, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, and we were, earlier this week, we were together and we were uh, talking about, you know, some of the, some of the artists who've done work using mortuary science texts oh. about about decay and coloring of decay and all yeah. these sorts of things. And, you know, uh, and then early on, I don't even know if people in the industry still use things like mortician's wax and things like that. And, you know, for constructing things and, or if they've gotten sophisticated enough that they don't have to use stuff like that anymore. Uh, I haven't seen it really used necessarily professionally, I guess in a while, but I mean, sure. it still certainly exists. I mean, uh, yeah. Sure. Um, and it's always good to have the tools, you know, I mean, just because, Ooh, you know, silicone encapsulated appliances are the most, you know, current thing doesn't mean it's the best way, you know? So it's always good to, um, remember the, the basics. Sometimes the well, simplest would, solution is the best, you know? I would but, assume that in the special effects field and especially depending upon the budget of the film, it's, it's a combination of what the budget will allow and what, with that budget, what you can do with that amount of money. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you, so you, you have a, it's, you, it seems like you have a really, you do a lot of different things. Do you have any favorite like tools of the trade that you like to work with the most? Tools of the trade. Um, I guess, well, in terms, maybe I, in terms of what I enjoyed the doing the most, I think is probably, uh, I think I enjoy fabricating stuff at the studio, you know, sculpting and making stuff. You know, I always just feel so bad with uh, makeup because I feel like I'm always hurting someone, <laughs> you know, really, like always, really, you know, it's, it's relatively uncomfortable. A lot of people are very enthusiastic. Like you guys were great, you know, like in the zombies thing that we did wasn't so elaborate that like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, it's basically just makeup and blood and dirt and stuff, you know, like, yeah. So that, too bad, you know, but like when you start to get do appliances and, you know, like, um, I mean, it can be really uncomfortable and removal can be relatively, you know, unpleasant. And, yeah. uh, and then you're like right in someone's face all the time. I mean, you gotta be like a, you gotta be like a therapist, you know, it's like a hairdresser or a tattoo artist. You gotta sit with someone for a long time, you know, right. um, yeah. and really be, uh, you know, you gotta be on, you know, especially if it's an actor because they gotta, you know, they're probably, they're so fragile egos anyway, you know what I mean? You've got to really boost them up and, you know, be like a cheerleader, right. and, uh, you know, really uh, listen to them and kind of be there for them. So it's, it's, I kind of just like being alone in the studio and sculpting and doing weird stuff, you know? Sure. I don't mind makeup. It's fine, you know, but like if I had to choose one or the other, I'd probably, you yep. know. So, uh, if, so that being the case, so if you had, if you were able to narrow your specialty even more, you just, would you want to work with just, because I'm not, you know, I'm not a, an artist like yourself. Do you work with just sort of the anim animatronic sort of things or, you know, the not working with live people, in other words, I guess, working with uh, sculpts and things like that? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would kind of prefer that. Well, this uh, begs the question, Ryan. Uh, 
What was it like working on um, I'm Not a Serial Killer? Uh, that was a weird one just because it was so fast. Um, really? Uh, yeah, they had to, the, let's see, the producers and director or whatever, they owned the property for like, they, they optioned it for like three years or something like that, or I don't know how many years they had it. But if they didn't, they're, they, it was going to run out. Their option to, you know, own the property was going to run out if they didn't like start a filming, you know what I mean? Like at a certain right. date was right. like um, so fast. And uh, that budget was really low. It was only like a million and a half, I think. Um, yeah. and, uh, I know that they had talked to, oh, who's the guy in Ohio? Um, Kurtzman, Bob Kurtzman. Yeah. Um, from oh, he's in Ohio? Yeah. Oh, or okay. not he just moved to Georgia, but yeah, he was in Ohio okay. at the time. All right. You know, they got a bid from him, and his bid was like, I don't know, 100 grand for the effects or something. Yep. As scripted. As scripted. Right. And then right. I know then um, someone else put in a budget of like 60000 and then basically they just came to me and like, you know, here's what we got. What can we do? <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. uh, I looked at the script, and I'm like, well, we can't, you know, you can't do a full body, you know what I mean? I, it, we're shooting in, like, two and a half weeks, you know, and you want, like, a full autopsy body, you know? Oh, like, my God. Yeah. You know, like, so, like, with the producer and the DP and the director, we talked about what we could show and what, you know, how to creatively shoot around certain things. And so uh, we, um, we got a plan together, and, uh, you know, then I just, you know, was – went nuts but it was such short notice again that like i couldn't be there for the entire shoot and it was shot up in like uh virginia minnesota i think yeah is that right mm -hmm. yeah about three hours away three or yep. four hours and yep. um because of other prior commitments that i had they had to kind of work around some effects things like on weekends or whatever or certain days you know so i'd come up for like three days go home for like a week come back for like three or four days go back for two days or four days and then go oh, back for know. days so it was a lot of you know, I remember one time, oh my gosh, I literally just pulled one of the fake heads, you know, out of the mold and the, uh, the resin was still curing yeah. and to in the winter in my car, almost passing out from the fumes, you know, from oh. the gas. Like, oh, oh, gas you know? Three and a half hours in my car with all these like toxic fumes anyway. But, um, oh, oh God. but they were really good about shooting it. Like the DP, uh, uh, Robbie Ryan, he won like, He's really good. He's won, he's been nominated for Academy Awards. Um, Philomena, I think, was one of them that he shot. Oh, was really? Yeah. Um, or Philomena, I don't know how you pronounce it. But, oh, uh, that's Judy Dench. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really, really, really talented. And the whole movie was shot handheld. Well, oh, the movie looks really good, Ryan. Wow. Yeah, I he's great. Without Robbie, I mean, I got to say, man, I mean... The director was great too. The actors were great. You know, every it really worked out. I really, really liked that script. When I read it, I was like, "Oh man, this is good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But let me ask you this: when you there's a big difference between reading the script and getting enthused about something, and then thinking, "Okay, I, my budget for that is this. This is how much time I'm. Yeah. I, I this is how much it's, my time is worth. This is how much I'm going to give them because I want it to really look as good as I possibly can." Exactly. And then on top of it. The, all the complicating factors of time and things never quite working out the way you want them to. And yep. that, that feeling, no doubt, of being on set and it's taking longer to put something on or make something work. And you just know that somebody, the producer's looking at his, you know, well, whatever this means in this day and age, you're looking at his watch and saying, this is costing us money. Why is it not working? And so do, do you reach a point where you, you have to have like a, a sort of a decompression period after working on a movie before you oh, can yeah. appreciate it? Absolutely. Um, my biggest fear of all time is holding up production, you know, because of an effect or makeup or yep. something like that. So yep. I try to overestimate all the time. I always try to like slightly overestimate uh, what I think it's going to take, you know, yep. if they, yep. so, and usually it's never a problem. I don't think I've ever on a bigger production, I should say on smaller ones, you know, like, in town or whatever, I've had some issues where, sorry, you know, the blood gag didn't work, you know, okay, we got to clean it up and restart it. You know what I mean? Yeah, sorry. Sure. This just, but it's blood, you know, people yeah. kind of expect, you know, like, uh, <laughs> things to go wrong there, you know, but, um, yeah. um, but there was, there was never really any issues on serial killer. 
It was just so damn cold. That was the problem. Oh, it was so cold. Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> how does that impact uh, you? You know, how, how do those kind of working conditions impact your? your oh, here's job? a good one. When we were in Virginia, we shot. I think it was early March, but we do you you've all seen the movie? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the scene where um, the Christopher Lloyd character? kills the truck driver and it's nighttime and he's like he's like gutting him in front of the yeah. light of yep. the truck yep. that was uh i believe the ambient outside temperature was minus 11. oh god when we were shooting that and it was the wind chill and at night i mean it was so cold and the only place we had was a garage like they rented out some neighbor's garage close to the shooting with one space heater no so we were all just like wow. oh and so every time, and like poor Christopher Lloyd, you know, had no hat and no uh, gloves, you know, and wow. for the scenes, I don't know how he did that. And then he had to tear this guy's stomach apart and we had to keep putting blood. I never, I've never come up with this. I, I now know of a better recipe to use, but at the time I didn't, but we, the blood would freeze almost yep. immediately. So it looked like there was cherry slushy all over his like fake fast. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, you know, like I didn't know. Luckily you can't tell, you know what I mean? Like the way they shot it. And well, stuff. It looks uh -huh. really it, look bad. Yeah, but, it looks really good. Ryan, it is all, it is all so shocking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's, kudos here. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> it yeah. is pretty effective. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, so, uh, oh, so you ended up doing a live cast then of, um, of, yeah. of, of Christopher Lloyd. Uh, so, yeah, um, that was how did hilarious. that go? Uh, so bizarre. It was so surreal. Um, uh, let's see. I can't just. Hey, actually, you know, let's, 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 I, I'm sorry. I just have to know how old were you when you saw Back to the Future? <laughs> uh, ten. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, oh, and then the funny thing too is that like I had uh, posters, you know, from like uh, not posters, I'm sorry, uh, calendars from like back in the '80s and '90s that I cut the pictures out of. So I had like framed pictures of like you know Terminator 2 and uh, um, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And so I actually <laughs> oh, yes. in my studio when he came here, off on the wall that I didn't even think about, but I had a picture of him as Judge Doom, you know, or uh -huh. whatever. Like, right on the ball and i'm like oh man i wonder if he saw that while he was here because i didn't mean you know it didn't even occur to me until after he was gone i'm like oh my gosh that's hilarious fanboy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah super surreal uh you know coming down the hall you know i'm like oh my gosh it was, oh wow this is weird you know and uh but he was he was really nice he was jet lagged so he's really tired yeah and uh, and i you know told him like well okay we're first going to cast your face i didn't want to do a whole head because uh time and you know yeah. he was probably 78 or something at the time i don't know yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but so anyway um i'm telling him so we're gonna do this face cast you know it's like alginate material but i know you've done it before you know star trek 3 you know uh yeah. Yeah. amazing mm -hmm. stories the tv show and he's all like what you know i'm like remember the fake head that you you know <laughs> go to the head of the class you know or you had a, your own severed head <laughs> the student that, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good yeah that was good that was good I'm like, well, we're going to do that basically again. You know, I was like, okay. So anyway, we uh, cast his face and that was no problem. And then uh, I had to cast his chest because there was a scene that we did. I don't know if you can see. Yep. Is that the split that, up there? The split, yeah, where he yeah. takes the lungs out. Um, and uh, there was a whole scene that we shot where he actually opens up his chest and puts the lungs in. And we, they cut that out. But um, so anyway, he's got a really hairy chest, uh, really hairy <laughs> long hair chest and so he's laying on my table and I, I vaselined him down and everything but I ended up like using the algin and I ended up back flowing it I should have done it all one way but I ended up back and got his hair stuck in the algin it so, <laughs> so pulling it out he was all like you know ah, ah. And I'm like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry <laughs> okay it's okay you know but anyway he was really nice about it and and that's all I really needed. But then I did have to sculpt the ears and the back of his head and shoulders and stuff like that to uh, make a full head of him, you know, which was more work, but it was easier on him. So obviously the right move, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I knew I could do it. Yeah. yeah, it was, there was time and uh, yeah. 
but yeah, he was, he was great. You know, I mean, I had to do all these, you know, the, the, the neck things, you know, where the, the, uh, material goes in and then out, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff. And he would sat through that. No problem. And, um, he was, he was really nice. he, super. He, and so weird because like he, he seemed like older in real life, but then when the camera was on, he was like, just boom, like a different person, you know, he was just like on it really there but then you know like you kind of like camera would be off and you go and sit down and he kind of seemed like he would shuffle and be quiet and kind of you know but then it's like ready to go and then he'd just be like oh mr you know just professional you know as hell yeah. so it was a good thing to watch oh that's fascinating um yeah. am i remembering correctly and i probably have got this wrong is he one of the one of the characters in one flew over the cuckoo's nest yeah he is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I know. Oh, I know. And that's another, another quality. If we ever get together in person again, sometime in the next forty years, you realize we're all gonna we're just gonna want to touch your hands for a moment. You know? <laughs> if, we're, if we're allowed to hand touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> all right. We'll wear gloves. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, a or something. <laughs> but yeah, are you point? Are you pointing out his uh, head sculpt behind you there? Yeah, yeah right there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try to pull you up here. I apologize. I'm still trying to figure out all this. I want to know. So I, damn technology. I've been looking at all of the the guys behind you. I like I like the faceless person with in the uh, in the suit. Faceless person in the suit. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a Slender Man. Yeah. Oh, I, cool. Wait a swap the. Uh, well, I don't know, but yeah, that was for a Slender Man thing. I can't really see. I know there's a way to flop the mirror image, but anyway. Yeah, we can see it. That's really cool. Yeah, that was one of the first like, things. That was like seven years ago. Gosh, Slender Man even isn't like Slender Man is a Gen Z thing. Yeah, it. I I didn't know what it was at the time. You know, like I the guy had to tell me. You know, and then I had to do research on it and stuff. But uh, um, I never saw that film. It was just a short film that some guy was doing and made a mask for him and just you know pretty much gave it to him. And then I never I don't know what happened to the movie. Never heard from him. So, have you, but it's cool. Have, I got the mold, so I made one. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so many, so many questions about various things you've worked on that I want to ask, and of course now I'm totally blanking. Well, I can, I can, I, I can go ahead. And the most recent thing I saw your work in was, it was, it's uh, just saw it on Shutter was your segment that you did for oh. Scare Package. Oh yeah, there we go. That's yeah. That yeah. That? Yeah, that's one of the oh, most yeah. entertaining. So I'm a big anthology person. Okay. That's one of the most entertaining horror films I've seen in a very long time. I think all of us, while we were collectively watching it, we're like, "Wait, there are people from Minnesota who worked on this." And yeah, this, yeah we, 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 we didn't have we didn't have any <laughs> idea when we first saw it that there was really? so many people oh, from yeah. Minnesota involved. It was oh, such across. a cool surprise that night. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Last time with Joe Bob and Darcy and. And Ryan Shadley's work is there. It's like, are you shitting me? It was like <laughs> we were really oh, surprised. Like, okay, this is this is awesome. Dave that needed smelling cool. salts. What's that? I said Dave needed smelling salts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. So, can yeah, you talk about working on that project? Uh, that was almost two years ago. Now that we did that, two years in August or September. And this is with Anthony Cousins. Yep. Okay. Yep. Who we don't so, actually know, but but we'd like to, you know chat with him sometime, I suppose, just to see, you know, his perspective yeah. in the horror world. But yeah, anyhow, he's, you, you, he's you, great. You, uh, he is absolutely, we're on the 1,000% the same page of everything we want to see. Oh, nice, uh, nice. So, uh, um, yeah, we got another one coming up. This is going to be fun. But anyway, um, ooh, 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 ooh. that was, yeah, that was almost two years ago. And, you know, they, uh, the producers he had met at a film fest, and they had seen... Um, uh, Susurus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is something I want to talk to you about too if we get, if we get time. And uh, Squirt Reynolds, they had also seen that. And so anyway, yeah. they asked if we would do this, a short, and it was all based on, you know, on tropes, you know, like horror movie tropes. And so, yep. you know, we were tossing around ideas and it's like, you know, well, what about the guy that can never be killed? That's always annoying, you know? And so um, <laughs> those guys really ran with it and made it, you know, uh, did the whole script. And obviously when they're writing, you know, you know, I'm very involved in that kind of stuff because I know Anthony, but also because it's like, what can we do effects wise? Yep. It's not like, you know, 
in this, if all of a sudden they just write, well, the guy blows up, you know, I'm like, well, I can't explode a full body. You know what I mean? Like, right, you know, but we right. put him through a wood chipper, you know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> but, like okay, let's do that. You know? So, um, it's how many very, like FBI agents do you think you had like on your phone? Like, <laughs> like, oh, we can't, we can't make him blow up, but like a wood chipper, maybe. Yeah. No, I, it seems to me that the key words <laughs> tag then. Uh, <laughs> Ryan is more likely to show up on a department of Homeland security watch list and any of us except maybe scott because of his yeah role yeah. as a trained assassin but that's something we're talking about. <laughs> yeah i'm sure they're watching now oh Retired. yeah exactly yeah 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 i have like, a little oh, nervous oh. about that uh about that assassinating uh world leaders joke <laughs> yeah i know oh, i was gonna, gonna go there. somewhere with that <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it offline yeah, yeah. i'll write you a letter <laughs> if the postal service will even work, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah that's another thing. Oh man. Uh, so, but, but getting back to um, getting back to uh, the sequence and scare package. Uh, oh, yeah. how, how much time did you guys have to work on on that? We shot that in three days, and there was virtually <laughs> no budget. But it was really fun because we shot at my uh, friend's house, uh, yeah. who lived like an hour away, and so I just got to stay there because. Um, you know, they got a spare bedroom. I've stayed there before and all my stuff, you know, I had to bring a lot of stuff, you know, and like, and then prep yeah. for the next day, you know, after the next first day was done and prep for the second day. And then the second day is done prep for the third day. So it was, it was fun though. I mean, it was just like a little weird vacation and it was, I mean, oh man, the crew was so great. And it was just knowing that we're doing so, something so silly and, sure. you know, so gory and we could just be as bloody as we want and not worry about that garage, you know, I mean, it was, it was really liberating and fun. Like it kind so, of almost uh, kind of kind of gleeful in a way, like oh, these kids playing, playing with special effects. Yeah, and yeah. The, the, it was so fun. But like, um, the thing I think I'm actually most proud of in that one is like we did have to do a head explode, and um, with all the gags in that movie, I mean there are, there is so much going on. It was just like, okay, that one's done. What's next? What's next? And then I'd run around like a chicken with my head cut off, prepping for the next one. You know, I was like, <laughs> okay, what are we doing now? Okay, what? Okay, okay, that's that one. And then, so anyway, we were supposed to shoot the, when the guy, you know, uses the stethoscope. You remember that? Where uh, the, yeah. the electricity travels up and it blows uh -huh. us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I had a head that I intended to use, but I didn't really prep it yet. I, I've blown heads apart before, but they've been like latex and polyfoam. This one was silicone. And silicone is much heavier. So um, when I cut the head apart, you know, it just wanted to flop open and flop, yeah. you know. I couldn't really get it to really stay together again, you know, because then you put the air mortar and the blood, you know, in the neck and then blow it and it just kind of blows apart, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, and I could not figure it out. I was trying to pin it and like, you know, all that. So anyway, what we ended up doing was shooting it upside down. We took the head like this, you know, and just went completely down. So we had gravity on our side. So that held it together? That held it together, but I it was so then I had the uh, the cannon shooting down, yeah, and we relit it. You know what I mean? Like so, it was yep. different. Uh -huh. And yep. then um, I had four lines of fishing line attached to the chunks of the head, and yeah. four people on either side. And uh, so when I blew the, uh, you know, I guess let's see, I don't know how I do this. When I blew the head, <laughs> you know, yeah. they yep. they pulled the chunks with the fishing line so that it went, you know, straight out instead of just going boom. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know, like, uh, yeah. And that was like the most, and I knew it was only going to be on screen for like maybe one second or less, you know? So like, I knew we could get sure. away with it. Yeah, but that's, and, huge. I mean, that's huge. It's so effective. Yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. I couldn't believe that worked. That is so Literally, cool. we were just watching it the other day and like Anthony and I were looking at each other like, wow, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, man. Wow. That's, that's, that's a combination of great effects and deft editing. I mean, yeah. that's and Anthony yeah. is willing to do anything, you know, he's so collaborative, you know, like, uh, I think we're going to have to do a reverse shot on this, you know, like, or, you know, uh, play it back, you know, so we'll, we'll pull it. So it looks like it's going forward, you know, and yeah, yeah, they, sure. yeah. you know, stuff like that, you know, yeah. he's whatever. Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, like whatever. That's great. Um, do you have any pieces? Really collaborative. From, do you have any pieces in the studio from scare package? Um, I don't think so, actually. You've got a lot of other really cool stuff in the background. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a nice, cool that's a nice background there. there. Yeah, really. <laughs> we all, we all yeah. have dreams of Cthulhu heads. Yeah. Walls, okay. 
Yeah. Is that from the blue? The blue uh, is it blue moon. Um, full moon. Full moon. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was really cool. Just seeing the snippets of all the behind the scenes stuff. I love. I love seeing sets being put together with bubble gum and everything. I mean, just you know, all the all that wonderful, you know. Yeah. Chunky, it's all magic. Done, handmade films. I, I it's it, it's just so yeah. cool. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, I, I get for that. You know. I, it's, 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 it's all the you know, it, it's not that we have a, an axe to grind when it comes to CGI. We've all seen fantastic use of it. But the three of us are monster kids in sort of the old school, late Absolutely. now silicon, you know, mold. I mean, that, that just does it for me. Even if it sometimes it's not as effective. Yeah. From, from one standpoint, the, the, the tactile feeling. Right. You just, it reigns supreme, you know. I, yeah. There's something, yeah, to the tactile feeling, and also the fact that um, the, you you don't quite understand. There's still some mystery or magic or something with it, you know. Like yeah, when it's, yeah. me, it's like I know the guy did it on a computer, and that's not to say that what they're doing is not incredibly elaborate and, right. and artistic right. and brilliant at all. But it's just you know how they did it, you know. And like right. something like this, it's like. Um, you're not quite sure all the time, you know, like, how did they do that? You know what I mean? There's a little element of mystery or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, we watched Jurassic Park earlier, and that's a recent one that we watched. That was my introduction to horror. Um, Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park. Ask her how old she was. Ask her, Ask her, how, old Ask her how old she was. I was, oh, wow. my, my dad showed it to me at age five. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I wow. turned out fine. Wow. Wow. That is a little young. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what I I've been saying. <laughs> I asked him about it the other day, being like, "What were you thinking?" He's like, "He's a doctor," and he's like, "It had DNA in it. You had to learn." <laughs> it's like ten out of five. But well, thinking about it, I was, I think, six when I saw the Dark Crystal, which yeah. was pretty. Yeah. Good. My my yeah. uncle worked on that. Really. My my uncle worked for Je my okay. My uncle is a is a Catholic priest now. <laughs> Any worked, correlation there? He yeah. worked for he worked for Jim Henson in lighting and design. Really? So he worked on the Muppets. He worked on Dark Crystal. I think right. he did some stuff for um. I don't. I I can't remember if he worked on uh, Labyrinth or not. But there's so much okay. stuff that he did that was puppetry and lighting and stuff like that. So that was another one that we grew up with at a super young age. But that getting, one. Um, well, oh, side note, by the way, of uh, the guy who did, okay, so do you know Brian, I'm sorry, um, Brian Froud's kid, Toby Froud, did yeah, the monster, yeah. and I am not a serial killer. He did what? He Wait, did the monster. The, oh, really? I didn't know that. Really? How did oh, I just that? Yeah, sorry, I, I, I hope you didn't think that I did the creature, yeah, the, uh, that was always going to be... That's fine. Wait, no, no, no. I just didn't know who made it. I didn't know it was him. Yeah. Todd, I'm sorry. Um, Toby Froud. Yeah, he was the baby in Labyrinth, actually. But anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, he, oh, cool. he created and designed that puppet creature. So it had some articulation, and it was about four... I never saw it. They shot that on green screen somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but it was about four feet tall, and uh, I saw pictures of it and the designs and everything. So I'm like, okay, so that's what's going to be coming out of Christopher Lloyd at the end. Cool. And yep. the guy who showed me uh, is William Todd Jones, and he is from um, England. And actually, his clear his closest neighbors are actually Brian Proud oh. and um, oh shoot, Alan Lee. No the, uh, way! Yeah, really? The I'm like, oh my God, Tolkien artist. Yes. Oh, wow. He's like, yeah, yo, you've got to come. You've got to come. We'll, 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 have, we'll have some drinks and we'll hang out. I'm like, oh. Can, can you I, imagine sitting in a room with Brian Cloud and Alan Lee? Wow. I'd be like, God. Oh. Okay. Is there, that's like, that's, they're a shoe in for like a movie compound or something. Just like build <laughs> walls around it and just stay there. I know. But the, again, yeah. by nearest neighbors, they're like probably two or three miles apart because they're like way in the countryside, you know, just living in the whatever. <laughs> The Shire, oh, with, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but William Todd Jones worked on Labyrinth and like The Neverending Story and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and uh, he's a puppeteer. And That's he so cool. it was awesome to meet him and have, hear his stories. And uh, yeah. 
Um, he was, for example, this was made me think of this. Um, he was in London with Jim Henson at a uh, like a vaudeville theater or something, and um, the guy who does the the crystal ball manipulation, you know, mm -hmm. they saw the act together. And Jim Henson apparently, this is according to William Todd Jones. Jim Henson leans over to him, he's like, "We got to put that in a movie someday." And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, my, my uncle has some weird stories with Jim Henson where he. They were, they were shooting a, a commercial for a cereal called Crunchy Stars. And it was like the Swedish chef, and they, he was doing, you know, the, whatever the Swedish chef does. And they had a couple of different effects where they had the Swedish chef, like, loading the, the dough into a machine gun and shooting out the cereal, or the cereal slowly exploding from the ceiling and stuff like that. And there was all these different things that they were trying. And my uncle was the one who, they, he'd, like, pull... He had to uh, pull a line to like release the the, the cereal, <laughs> and uh, my other uncle, his brother, was with him. Release the cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can only imagine Jim Henson like saying that, but yeah. um, <laughs> unleash the cereal. There we go. <laughs> I think I'd rather hear Liam Neeson say it, but that's okay. <laughs> Killer cereals. Um, but they, I another uncle was on set with him, and the. The special effects uncle got it, got the timing wrong, and like, and the puppeteer who was doing the the Swedish Chef, like looked back oh, at the camera, like, and looked back, and then he did the special effects, and Jim Henson laughed, and he's like, "That was fucking hilarious," and turns to my other uncle, being like, "Wasn't that funny?" <laughs> and he's like, "You're Jim yes. Henson, I don't know." <laughs> if you say so, Jim. <laughs> You're happy, I am. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but, oh. getting, getting back to the whole concept of practical effects versus CGI, I feel like Jurassic Park is a really good encapsulation of both, where it's both really, really exciting, but we've talked a lot about the um, the life-size animatronic T-Rex. Yeah. And, like, how just insane that is that that exists. That yeah. that and, like, that's a yeah. feat of artistry. And yeah, what I, made it terrifying. Yeah. Have you so, seen the making of and everything on that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, uh, they said no rain, and then, of course, there's, you know, downfall of rain, and all the yeah. things are calibrated for a certain weight, and then all of a sudden they're heavier, and then it's like the T-Rex has got that shakiness, whatever. <laughs> yep, yep. Just yep. slap it and dry it off and all that. Um, yeah, yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Spielberg was having, like, you know, Flashbacks to Bruce the Shark, uh, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. Again. yeah, yeah, I bet. But it's so it's so masterful. He gets from that. Oh God! So I mean, yeah. you, you just I mean, you know what it's like to push clay, right? And you know, and, and sculpt something. So, you know, when you see images of the Stan Winston studio people sculpting scales and whatnot, I mean, you get a little bit of a thrill just seeing that footage. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's good stuff. Oh, so cool. Oh, man, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, Monster Palooza, by the way, yes. I went 2000, I think, 13, maybe 14, maybe even 12. I don't know. It was a long time ago, but it was mind blowing. You know, I don't even know if I had the studio yet, you know? So, I mean, that was a big one, though, for me to be like, wow, you know, like this is, wow, the level of artistry and. And I couldn't believe it. But anyway, literally upon walking in, all of a sudden there's Matt Winston, his kid, wow. and uh, and Shannon Shea. I don't know if you know who that is, but yep. Yep. Uh, but uh, I'm like, oh, oh, geez, you know. And like, I just, I think I just said, oh my God, Matt Winston and Shannon Shea, you know, like, and they're like, hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> but then I saw like Bob Burns. I got a picture with Bob Burns. Wow, so, really? Bob Burns, oh my goodness. Yeah, wow. and uh, Norm Rivera. I don't know if you know who that is. But, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was That's awesome. pretty amazing. That's just wild. Mike Hill. Uh, yeah, saw yeah, yeah, yeah. Time culture and stuff. Yeah, uh, you've, so, yeah. So you've actually seen those. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's exciting, like, oh, man. That's oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at this. Look, there's drool. There's drool right there. <laughs> oh. But I, I'm dying to go back, you know, because I felt like at the time, okay, all right, now I see, you know, in person. I can see these things up close, you know what I mean? Like the detail level is insane, but I can at least see these things now for real up close and uh, yeah. realize where the bar is set and how to 
you know, where I need to be, you know, it's a good push to, uh, you know, to grow, adapt. So, so, so you, you, in many ways found it inspiring. Oh yeah. Good. Well, also Uh, depressing. So I'm like, Oh my God, I got so far to go, you know, but I I know the feeling I'm, I'm a, I'm a visual artist. I primarily paint, you know, for a living, (laughs) for a, for a living. Thank God my wife (laughs) taught for 38 years, but you know, (laughs) Uh, Isn't it great that we live in a society where the arts are appreciated so much? <laughs> you know, I'm so grateful that you know we. Uh, wow. God, we um, be treated like freaking animals. I mean, it's like. Oh, yeah, seriously. Yeah, the whole feeling that you should be thankful that somebody wants you to do what you're passionate about, but then you got to find somebody to make sure you don't starve. It's it's. That's it's like it's like getting punched in the face, and someone gives you a band aid, and it's like, here, aren't you grateful for this band aid? Oh. Hey, well. I just can't believe, too, producers these days. I mean, like, yeah. Um, it's like going to Chipotle and getting a, hey, well, what would you like? Well, here's what I want. I like a burrito. I like chips and guac and a drink. But I'm going to, would $2 be cool? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no, not really. Not at all. Um, okay, how about three? You know what I mean? That's what it's like negotiating with producers. Uh, guac is always And nice. I get it. I get it. You know, they want to do everything as cheap as possible. And, you know, but I mean, it's just, yeah. oh, it's just maddening. I just, the business side of this is the crusher. I'm sure you can relate to this as well. You know? Uh, yes and no, because I, I, I mean, I can relate to it to one degree or another. I, I, I'm a picture book illustrator and the picture book uh, world underwent a major transition in the mm-hmm. last 10 or 15 years. So I, I would, li- I literally get less now to do the same work than I would have 10 or 15 years ago. And there really aren't residuals anymore. That's thanks to Amazon and other things. Oh. Gone. But, 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 but having said that, um, the motion picture, the motion picture world, <laughs> um, obviously has really undergone a major shift. Are you getting a yeah. shot there? I think so. I've, yeah. So are I, we. It sounds like it's pouring outside. But yeah, I it is. It is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time listening to, um, say, the uh, Shockwaves podcast. I don't know, with the collapse of Fangoria and all that stuff, who knows what's going to happen with those folks. But, yeah. but you know, discussions of n- not only uh, low-budget movies, but, but like micro-budget movies, and how this is more the reality for people than ever before. D- d- does that jive with your experience? Um, I think what's going to happen in terms I mean, of the genre, genre films. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the budgets are going down, um, but nobody wants the quality to change, yeah. you know? Right. Um, and that's the hard thing because there's so many avenues for, for release now, you know, it used to be, uh, before the fifties, it was a uh, theater only, you know, and then the T then TV. Now it's a like TV and theaters, you know, right. or movie theaters. And then uh, now the internet, so there's internet TV and theaters. And now with the internet and then, you know, uh, online subscriptions, there's so many platforms and content, content, content. Everybody wants content, but nobody wants to pay for it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, right. uh, it's really hard because as a artist, and again, you can relate, I don't want to, I'm not going to, I feel like I'm getting almost forced to do substandard work for the money but i don't want to do that you know i want to keep growing and you know like getting better and improving and uh but i can't yeah man, yeah it's yeah. so hard to it's such a catch-22 you know like sure yeah. i don't want to be like uh well here's a crappy ass hand but you only have 50 bucks you know what i mean this is what you get you know like uh yep. they, yeah. they, they, whether they intend to or not they, they put the artist in a shitty spot because we all basically thrive based upon our reputation and our standing yeah, right. and um you know I, i'm 56 i'm still paying dues and i've been paying my dues for 30 years you know i keep thinking yeah. when do i have to stop paying the dues <laughs> and i realize i know stop, maybe never you know i don't know. And, 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 I, and, I, and i'm thinking uh people especially <laughs> in, uh, you know the the, the practical practical effects side of things might feel like they're much in the same spot. I mean, they're all absolutely. Uh, and and um, but can I shift it ever so slightly? Did did you um, did you have that same little bit of feeling of sadness in inside you when you realized that Rick Baker 
had closed up shop and was yeah. selling up a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, maybe he's happier for not having to do it too, you know, you know? I think so. I um I literally just a week ago finally finished his book that mm -hmm. uh, Metamorphosis. I don't know oh, if you guys it? Yep. Amazing. Unbelievable. Highly recommend Unbelievable. It. Okay. But I have so much respect for that guy. Um because he would I mean he would really he was like the last of a collaborator, you know, and that's why he kind of got out when he did was because uh, the too many producers, you know, like it used to be, he, he literally described it as this, like in the seventies, maybe early eighties, um, they would hire him because he was good at what he did, you know, like, uh, okay, we need a werewolf. All right, cool. I'll give you a werewolf, you know? And now it's like, uh, we need a werewolf. Well, I'd like some preliminary designs. And like 400 designs later with like 18 studio executives who have to approve and look at everything. Like, I don't know. I think his eyes are too close together. You know, he's yeah. like, fuck yeah. this. You know, this is yeah. so dumb. You know, like, do you want me to do this or not? This is what I'm good at. You know, like, I get it. I'll follow your parameters and I'll give you options. But I mean, this is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he really stood his ground. And he, um, again, I really think he's happier because he's one of the guys that too will – do 150%, you know, like, yeah, and yeah. almost kill himself in the process because yep. he's so invested, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. And, and from, from whatever I gather, and I've never met the man, uh, but from whatever yeah. I, whatever, whatever vibe I get from watching interviews and, and reading and, and, you know, conversations that uh, John Land has had with him and whatnot, you get the impression that, that Baker's just a very kind of a sweet, quiet, humble guy who just likes to do his thing, you know? Yeah. And I, I know. I, I love that about him, you know, and, and what amazing work. I mean, God. I know. He's, I, oh, my God, and a pioneer and trying new things and, like, just a uh, collaborator as well. He was never a dictator, you know, like, uh, when yep. they started Gremlins 2, you know, they hired the crew. Yeah. And, uh, like, well, what do you want us to do? And he's like, start sculpting some Gremlins, you know, like, well, what do you want him to do? What do you want him to look like or what do you – I don't know. You tell you show me, you know, like just be creative. What, you know, what do you got? You know, like, and that's yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> but again, like, uh, Oh, what was another story he told about? He was, I don't know, in, in the middle of a production, but his wife wanted to have some uh, dinner guests over and I don't know who they were, but they were, uh, after they left, they, they mentioned like the next day, like, is your husband okay? He's so quiet. And he's so, uh, you know, um, so <laughs> withdrawn or whatever. And she asked him, you know, like, are you, it was everything okay the other night? And he's like, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You, you guys were just talking about stuff and I'm not really good at politics or, you know, like whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know monsters in movies. So I just thought I'd just keep my mouth shut, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how could you not love the guy? And he's an amazing painter too. You know, oh he, he's, he's, he's like the, he's like the consummate monster kid. I mean, he comes right. out of that era, you know, and he brought him to life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. I think we all have a, a love and affection for him. Can I shift this slightly? I, I'd be real curious to know if you have any clue whatever became of Rob Bottin. Does anybody know? Um, I've heard rumors, uh, of course, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, but no, not really, not officially. I heard that he got into, like, real estate or something. And uh, he's just like living off rental rental properties or something. Um, I'm not really uh, sure. It's fascinating. Then, There's another guy who's kind of like a prodigy, you know. In, oh yeah, in his own right. I mean, you look at the stuff he did for Thing. Oh my God! If he had never done anything beyond that, he would still be kind of a a, a god of sorts in my you know in, in my imagination. Yeah. But 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 I wonder you know. if you know, just the business side of it and his personality, which may have been very strong. I wonder if it was just too damn much in the end. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I um, There was a rumor that, uh, or I guess maybe this is true, but supposedly he did some work on Game of Thrones. Yeah. One of the seasons on Game of Thrones. That's the last I heard that he was ever credited for anything. Yep. But there's no stories or follow-up with that. You know, like, how did that happen? What did he do exactly? Hmm. You know, like, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Was he the one putting on the, 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 the White Walkers faces or? No, he didn't do that. <laughs> Because I've seen the people who did that. I still don't, I don't know who they are, actually. That's embarrassing. But um, oh, that's okay. You can't I, don't know, I don't know what he did. It's, I follow the makeup artist who did, I think, the White Walkers. But he also worked on um, Chernobyl. 
Oh yeah. Oh. So they it's that hyper realistic yeah. Yeah. Um, radiation yeah. Yeah. decay, um, which was also incredible. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Scott brought this up earlier, but um, I'd love to know more about the like the thing that I always think of when I see any sort of special effects or, or horror gore, anything like that, is how much of this is realistic and how much of this is imagined. Oh. Like when you when you want to create like a blood effect, do you go like do you do you look at it and say, okay, well this is gonna like the femoral artery is gonna be cut and it's gonna splatter this way and stuff like that, or do you say, well, or, or are you a little bit more? Do you take more oh. liberty with it? Um, a little bit. I it certainly more more nowadays you know like i i ask you know kind of questions about you know like well what is the wound you know or how was it created if like there was no real description and you know um just to get any information i can and then of course researching is always gross you know um if you're talking about blood bladder or something like that you know that's different i don't really know a lot of haven't seen a lot of you know traumatic blood injuries i guess um but uh in terms of actual Makeups and research, I have found that a lot of we've been conditioned to kind of accept this false reality of what things look like, you know, uh, it's like the movie gore, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and if you kind of try to make it too realistic, people will actually see it and be like, that looks fake. And like, oh, I really it looks exactly like what a, 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 you know, a shotgun blast to a head looks like, you know, which is really bad, you know, and yeah. like, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen like, you know, car accidents where a body just becomes nothing, you know, and it's just, it doesn't look real, you know, it's like we're all used to, yeah. Yeah. you know, this kind of whatever stylized, violent, you know, aftermath. And, Interesting. Um, right, right. Yeah. So you got to obviously use anatomy as a basis, but like you kind of got to get artistic with it, hmm. which is weird. And there's a lot less blood in the body than you'd think. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do we have? Nine, nine points or something like that? Nine or ten something points? Something like that. And yeah, I'm wondering, yeah, right. how, how, much, how much blood did you go through on Scare Package? <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good one. I don't know. I'd probably say five to seven gallons, maybe. Okay. Wasn't yeah. that? Well, the video you posted of you blasting the actress with the blood <laughs> on the... Uh, that is just hilarious. And oh, I hope you guys right. managed to hold it together as long as you could. That was that that was that was like an act of willpower right there. I, I think you can hear. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was like I did the, you know, like <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of Yeah. Because I mean, good God. I, I don't know. I, it was a good and then sport. I can't believe it just like reacted and then continued, you know, like I showed her out back, you know what I mean? Like with water, you know, like this is what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, bam, you know, and yeah. she's mm -hmm. like, okay, All right, okay, great. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to be, you know, so, uh, so I knew what was coming, you know what I mean? It wasn't like this total surprise, sure. yeah. but still yeah. like, bam, you know, just like, wow. It wasn't like, is it Veronica or Angela? Which one of the Cartwrights is an alien? I always get confused. I'm in love uh, with her, and I can't ever remember. I can't ever keep them straight. I'm in love with. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, she was in with I mean, the, the, the story is that you know they. I mean, they knew something was going to happen. They didn't know exactly oh, yeah. what it was going to be like when that. Yeah. You know, I guess that's what she's reacting to, right? Yeah. Well, they get they went right in her face too, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was that just uh, one take that you did? Oh yeah. Just one. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's why it's always when you do effects like that, it's like, is everybody ready? You know, because, <laughs> you know, like to clean her up would have been a nightmare, you know, like, okay, right. And the set and, and everything else. Like blow dry her hair again, you know, like, it's yeah. such, oh, I mean, so. presumably it would take hours to reset everything, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> God. And all that time lost and. Yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. when everybody's working for virtually nothing, you know, granted it was fun, you know, but like. You do and that's the only reason. If you can't pay, then you better have fun, you know, right? Yeah, so, yeah that's true. And well, it was true. I mean, from our standpoint, just for sheer entertainment value alone, man, we're so glad you guys worked on that because it was uh, it yeah. was a blast. No, no I really like a blast. I really <laughs> like that. I really like that Chris McEnroy, the one with the um, 
the melted blob dude in the mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that was oh, great. Yeah. that was that was I, very cool yeah, yeah I, I really liked, liked that one. yeah I liked the um the sleepover one uh where it was uh Directed by a woman, hyper stylized, where they oh, with the masks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Cool. I thought that one was pretty, pretty. Clever. It looked amazing. Yeah. yeah well, the oh. lighting in that was yeah. super, super cool. Um, uh, they did a lot of cool stuff with that. So I, that's that was a, another favorite from all that. Yeah. Yours is the first though. Ryan, how you? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> look at him. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ryan, how are you doing for time? You doing all right? I'm fine. Yeah. We we have we have gone on for over I think an hour now, which doesn't really, oh. really matter to me. It's our podcast. We can do whatever the hell we want. In the past, we sometimes split these into two if we can find a natural point. But there are just so many other funky things I'd like to ask you. Uh, can we step back in time? <laughs> Let's step. I win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Go back to 2019. Oh <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. If we could all step back into time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, your you, one of your earliest memories of like a of like a, a a classic monster. However, you want to define that. You know, childhood memory of something that that you thought, oh, this is the world that I want to be a part of. I guess. I, and for right. myself, I'm thinking in terms of literally some of those old school universals. I mean, I really ha had an affection for those. Scott and I are of, the, of almost the same age, within a few years of each other, so we watched Horror Incorporated here in the Twin Cities back in the early 70s. And, the, the, and they basically, you know, they, they all would come Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, all the old Universal stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we graduated to, you know, Hammer over time and so on and so forth. But, yeah, so from your standpoint, any early, early memories? Um, I, well, back to the, probably the Dark Crystal. I mean, that really... <laughs> was a yeah. massive like what the hell is happening because i mean it's live action but there's no people in it yeah. right and yeah. i believe i know we were watching the muppet show my sister and i at yep. the time but yep. i don't know if i made the connection that these were puppets i guess i did but mm -hmm. um i don't know i was only like again five or six but i know we saw i saw it four times in the theater my dad oh, took me oh my goodness right, uh, yeah, I mean, you, know, you basically like, take, wow, you take to go wow. back again. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But that one was a big one. Um, remember Time Bandits? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 That, that freaked me the hell out. Um, that was horrifying. And then uh, yeah. Crash of the Titans was another big one. That was a yeah. really oh, yeah. big one. And is yeah. that Ray's last hurrah? I think it's his yeah. last film. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but yeah. what a what a good one to go out on, Mike. Oh, God. no kidding! Oh, yeah. God, yes. Yeah, I mean that Medusa is still. Yes, that scared the shit out of me. Like, oh my God, uh, when they cut the head off and then it goes down and you see the blood come out, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so <laughs> tame, you know, like, comparatively. But at the time, or in Star Trek Two: Wrath of Khan, when the yes, you know, the, the, the yes, out, yes, I remember like being like, oh. You know, <laughs> Oh, scary. <laughs> or even cutting the Tauntaun open in Empire Strikes Back. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, God. You know, like, yeah. it's so yeah. dumb. So your, your, reactions, dumb. your, your reactions um, bring, bring, bring me to something that Mary and I were just talking about the other day is how, you know, horror can sort of be a cathartic experience. But, but oh, there yeah. is, when you're at a certain age, or even now, quite frankly, there are things that I find horrifying on film, even though I know they're not real. You know, they created the context, and I'm fully invested in the story. So when that thing happens, it, it hurts, right? Um, and yet you keep going back to the well. You want you put yourself through it. I remember being at the oldest, six years old, and seeing uh, Hitchcock's The Birds. And I see when, when uh, Jessica Tandy finds a farmer with his eyes missing. Oh, yeah. As a little kid, it scared the out of me. Yeah. But the next time I got a chance to see it, like once a year throughout my entire childhood, I was there. I, I was repelled and attracted at the same time. So does this sound familiar? Oh, yeah. As a way of almost sort of, uh, as a way of sort of controlling it and, and wanting to be the storyteller to have that sort of yes. control over it and also be able to sort of, for lack of a better word, inflict that on the people around you, you know? There's a power That's there. That's true. Uh, but again, figuring out the mystery takes away its power over you, kind of, you know, or figuring out the magic trick, uh, kind of, yes. you know, 
Um, it's like, um, again, maybe like a little bit of befriending the enemy so it doesn't hurt yep. you or anymore or yep. attack you or I don't know. There's a lot of psychology behind it for sure. Yeah. And you think that's a common that's a common stream for a lot of us? You think so? Sure. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I mean, I I know that again, like, I, oh, yeah, maybe somehow like takes away, you know, the because I mean, I was a freaked out kid, you know, like I did yeah. sleep door open all the time, you know, like lights on. I, you know, fall asleep out on the couch and have my parents take me to bed because I was too freaked out, you know, to. Uh, sure lay in the dark by myself, you know, like, I mean, it was, it was bad. Nightmares. Yeah. Bad, yeah. Bad yeah. And, and I think that was happening before movies, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you watch too many horror movies. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I mean, you know, like when I, you know, had to, my parents wouldn't let me watch anything, you know, like uh, I had to go to my friend's houses to watch, you know, the, the stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, can relate. <laughs> yeah. So, I remember, oh, this is a good one. Uh, this must have been in, nine, I don't know, maybe I was 13 or something, but my mom was like, you're never going to ever watch or bring these movies into this house. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, all right, those are the three I got to see. I'm like, what were those again? Okay, Texas, what? You know, and, anyway, so and, that you weekend. Know, I'm going to spend the night at Brad's house this weekend, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to Bible study, and <laughs> and you know uh, it's interesting you bring up Friday the Third. Or I'm sorry, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because that's a movie that had such a powerful reputation when I was, you know, when it came out, yeah. and then when I saw it, um, probably five or six years after it had been, in it's an initial release. It was still had it still had a lot of real. Uh, uh, impact, visceral impact. But on the other hand, in, in the years I've watched it since, almost all of the violence is really just implied. You know, there really isn't, there really isn't a lot of scenes of like arms being cut off or people being, it's all just, you know, if the cameras, it's at an angle where you don't actually see anything happening. Yeah. Yeah. Bones Which, but it's still a really powerful movie, even though that's the case. I'd say that's the beauty of it, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of the violent. I mean, there's the, the girl on the hook, I guess. You kind of yeah. see Yeah, it. yeah. There's the, when he comes open, opens the door, and he hits the guy with the hits hammer. Hits the guy with the hammer. And then but I guess I, I, the guy in the wheelchair, yep. you know, kind of see from behind, I guess. In literally the, like, the, like among the, it doesn't, doesn't like the, the guy in the, in the, in the van in the beginning. Oh, just, yeah. He cuts yeah. Himself, but those are like maybe four or five you know, scenes and the rest of it. But they're gory yeah, or yeah. violent. I mean, I, they're violent, but they're not like, yeah, there's something about that movie. It's like, um, I do think that somehow there's some sort of intangible, uh, I don't know, attitude or feelings that can almost be like imprinted, you know what I mean? In the celluloid or whatever, you know, like there, you know, we were just talking about scare package and how much fun it is. And I think you can see it, you know, like on screen, oh, yeah. that was fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and I think you can tell that, you know, nobody was miserable making that movie, but I think you can tell some other movies, you know, um, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it looks like it smells, you know, like that movie just feels like it should smell when you watch it. It's grimy. It feels yeah. Yeah. Oh, like you get, you get yeah. sweaty watching it. It yeah, has yeah. such a strange vibe, you know, like that is, yeah. you, you, I respect that movie. That is not a movie that, like, um, I'm bored. You know, I'm just going to pop on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, you know, I'll just yeah. hang out. You know, it's like, no. no I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable watching that movie from the beginning to the end. There's, for me, there's no, there's no respite and there's no catharsis. You are just stuck in this nasty, grimy, sweaty yeah. movie. Yeah. And you can't get the fuck out until it's over. And then you can never really get out because you've been through it, which is an amazing test. It's kind of like Last House on the Left in some way. Oh and yeah. There's something about a couple of those movies that were transgressive at the time and even now still feel transgressive. Although and, I think you know, it's a, is it a post Vietnam thing? Is it in relation to everything at the time? But keep in mind I didn't see them until I was in my twenties. And even then I felt like I'd been sort of uh, abused by the filmmakers to the point where I've actually only seen both of those movies once. I don't know. I I, I agree to a point where I think one of the things that's really exciting about horror and sci-fi is that, I mean, humans' imaginations fill in a lot of the blanks inherently. 
And that's something that's mobilized by these films in, in such a powerful way. And I think that things like Last House on the Left, um, which I also saw at way too young of an age. And, oh, God, here we go, Scott. Um, we can talk to her you're four and a half. Now. Yeah, right? <laughs> We, we uh, have have very Park and Last House on the Left, right? I would say. Yeah, that's, it was a back-to-back -back feature. It was great. <laughs> oh, God, what a I slept an interesting high. combination. <laughs> yeah, right. Mary, Mary Poppins and Texas Chainsaw in the same. Right. I, I mean, I think I saw <laughs> Last House on the Left and Texas Chainsaw both when I was like 14. Wait, again, way too young. But like, but th those are two movies where the, the the artists who created them like knew which levers to push. Where it's like, all right, what can we what can we show and what can we not? to get people to, to, to get this feeling. Um, and that's, I mean, it's, it's like a masterclass in, in horror filmmaking. Yeah. And so was the, um, that was the movie that really destroyed me. That was always, and that still will always be my, my top, I think, scariest movie of all time, probably because of my religious upbringing. But back to what you're talking about, masterclass in horror filmmaking, what I really, really appreciate with what he did was the contrast. Everything is in contrast, you know, with that movie, light and dark, you know, it puts you on edge, loud and quiet, you know, um, you know, in, in talking about good and evil, you know, and then, uh, you know, it's just, did you hear that? Someone's out there. Hang on a second. Can you hang on one second? Oh dear. And we never saw him again. Say, are you in South Minneapolis? I am. Look at all that great stuff right on the back. wall back there. Look at all of those oh, cool. really awesome sculpts. Well, that was weird. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Are you? Are that you was awesome. Awesome. You're good. That was an awesome setup for a found footage kill. In a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Did you oh. hear what I'm saying? No? Okay. No, I couldn't hear it. No, they're like, Ryan, I know you're in there. And they, there's like some people down the hall that I know and stuff. And anyway, <laughs> like, what's that? I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, every noise nowadays, I live in Powderhorn. So like every, every noise is like, are the cops yeah. shooting off, explode, like, <laughs> are they shooting off concussion grenades again? Yeah. Yeah. Mary was in the middle of a lot of this over the last few weeks. So, yeah. Yeah. And don't you just love the fireworks? I mean, every night. Oh yeah. I, I've never been. I, I've never been this jumpy. Like, just it's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> the fireworks, the jumpiness. Yeah. 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 Oh, I uh, I was saw somebody tweet. You know, like uh, something about like you know, it's like the fireworks guys of America all came together and they said. In these trying and troubling times, what the world needs now is loud, unexpected booms. More than anything, you know? Oh, really, so we got to give it to you. Gotta give it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's probably as good a note as any to end on. We need to... <laughs> Wait, I have one more question. Yeah, loud, unexpected booms, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd be happy to go on for two more hours, but we may be yeah, asking too much of Brian and anybody who wants to listen to us. I have, I have one more question. Um, well, two. Okay. Um, <laughs> since we're Monster Movie Happy Hour, favorite or cocktail of choice? Oh, um, well, I was going to do, um, I'm at the studio, so I don't want to drink too much. So I was going to do beer and I was going to do one of my favorite beers, which is uh, Rogue Brewery, Dead Guy Ale. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, the liquor stores, the two that I went to didn't have it. So I went and got, um, this is one of my other favorites. And I figured this is appropriate. Fantasy Factory. <laughs> Yay! Oh, which is kind of <laughs> like the studio. Look at that. Yes, yes, right? absolutely. So, anyway, perfect. again, who doesn't like a cat with a riding a unicorn shooting flames <laughs> yes. out of its nose? I mean, this everything about this art yeah. is fantastic. As, so, yeah. as, as God intended cats to be. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. Well, he's got a gun, too. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yep. Wonderful. That's like a 357 or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's how I feel when I drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the second question um, Dave sort of asked this in one way earlier, but do you have a if you had to, if you had to only watch one horror movie for the rest of your life, over and over, which one would? Yeah. <laughs> oh man! 
It's an unfair question, but I'm asking anyway. We let oh, Mary get away with this all the time. I guess I probably would have to go with the thing. Yep. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. Uh, same here. Likewise. Yeah. What, what is I think, that movie? What is it, guys? I think the four of us. Well, Mary. Mary's a huge. Mary's a gothic. <laughs> you know. I. You're a goth. I, no, I, no, no, no. But she loves <laughs> gothic horror. Well, so do oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Great too. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. I, but I think a couple of us would definitely. Well, I'll post thirty-one, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. There's a reason your studio is called. Here he goes. Great. Yeah, I got my little thing shrine over here. Oh, look at all this. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what? Screw it. We're we're going on a tour of the studio right now. We'll we'll cut this <laughs> when we need to. Look at that. That's oh, yeah, the Fangoria. Oh, oh that's a good where one. Where did you get that? Uh, that one I got a Crypticon. That. This, believe it or not, is my buddy's, but it's anyway signed by John Carpenter. But I just found it when I was cleaning up. I'm like, "Do you want that back?" And he's like, ah, "I don't care." I'm like, "Oh, oh okay, I'll keep no it. kidding, cool. I don't care." Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. we're now breaking into your studio. What else? You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What else you got going there? Jeez, look at this. Uh, it's really a mess. I don't know. Well, uh, I mean, it, it, trust me. If I were to pull away the curtain behind me, you would not believe what you'd see. I the, totally get it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. is that kind awesome. of your Wendigo? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was this was uh, for a short film called Elixir uh, by Justin Staggs, and I got to play the creature. Yes, it's so you know, cool. I'm in this outfit in the middle of the woods chasing this uh, girl, and uh, but he designed it. He really wanted, you know, like he had a very clear idea of what he wanted it to look like. So sure. it was just a matter of making what his you know concept designs were. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that a pig head? Pig head? What? Oh, up there? Wolf head? Pig head? What are we seeing here? That thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was, uh, that was for a movie that still I don't think is out yet. And this is an unfinished mask, but um, he wanted it to be, it's about a guy who, uh, he's a killer, of course, and his mom called him a little piggy all his life, and he made all these masks, pig masks, and this one, he wanted it to be a cross between like Disney's Three Little Pigs and Leatherface from oh, Texas Paint. Wow. So That's cool. this one, it needs to put like, you know, there's like suture marks, you know, or sutures that I would put in there, yeah. there as well, but that, it's not yeah. done yet, but. Yeah. Um, oh, that's wonderful. This, this is fun. I just did this over quarantine, this weird little guy. I, I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember you posting that's, pictures about it. Even watching that, Ryan, that's great. What, 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 yeah, what's, just, he, what's he made of? What material? This one is, is resin. Okay. And then this one is uh, silicone. Okay. And am oh, I correct okay. in, in remembering that these were then scanned? They made yeah. Scans? Yeah. So that's what's really exciting about we're going uh, back to the back to uh, talking about CG. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my friend Peter, who I've known for a few years, who has uh, done a lot of incredible work. Uh, he he agrees that you know something created entirely in the digital world feels fake or weird now what we're trying to do is i'll make the things practically then if he scans them he can maybe animate them or you know and so we're this was a literally a test we're gonna see now you know what i mean like how realistic this looks if it still has that weird kind of cg feel if he animates it or whatever yeah, but he's yeah. got it. He's got the file now. So then he's going to add the points to it and try to manipulate it. Okay. And if nothing else, then he's really good at compositing. So, for example, we were just about to do, um, before this whole uh, the city erupted, uh, we were set to do a bunch of blood gags outside against the green screen. So, like, you know, just literally blood, whoop, you know, like against the... And he can take those elements and, and then, you know, do whatever he wants with them and then, you know, add them to something. So it's mm -hmm. better than some sort of computer generated, you know, algorithm, you know, with squirts or whatever. It's, it's yep. real. Yep. They just yep. put it yeah. in there. So, yeah. you know, and then in that Femalian movie, you know, we shot a bunch of tentacles against yes. green screen yes. and then it's just mm -hmm. both put them in there, you know. So you don't have to do it on set and, you know, waste time necessarily. Yep. yep. So yep. I think this is yep. a good compromise and a good way to work with, uh, I don't know, do you know Todd Masters or Masters Effects um, in Vancouver? I don't. Oh, oh, I, 
Yep, yep. Hey, Scott, I have heard of him. <laughs> Sorry, there's, there's, <laughs> there are people shooting up fireworks very close to my house. <laughs> Again, yay. And just everything is just like, oh, God. <laughs> There have been a lot of gunshots too lately, and yeah, I, I swear they're doing that on purpose, right, to hide the gunshots, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, okay. yeah. It's just it's yeah. if there's enough noise, you have to sort out what it is. Well, right. there, there were there were twenty one or twenty five rounds shot about just a couple blocks from our house recently, and which is very interesting because those were extra gunshots that they're investigating, and they're not sure who was shooting at what. So. Jesus Christ. We are living oh, in interesting God. times, folks, which is why I, I heard love that one. movies. I love sci-fi. I love fantasy. Uh, those are my go-to right now. And quite frankly, as a way of understanding, but also escaping this world we're living in, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't really. want to be ignorant and, uh, you know, I don't want to be uh, willfully avoidant or anything like that. But again, exactly. you can't, uh, I can't be... You got to have an escape or a little bit, yeah. you know. Absolutely. You need to protect your, your yourself, your psyche. You know. See, when, yeah. when things get hard, I I tend to turn to horror. Where yeah. where when I don't know, like if I've seen horrible things or experienced something like truly horrific, like you know, gun violence, like stuff like that. Um, like I don't want to escape. I want I want something that is that speaks to that experience, to that rawness. Um, and I feel like horror does that, where it's, it's almost like a commiseration yeah. in, in, in pain, yeah. things like yeah. that. So I, I'm really curious to see what happens or what comes out of this time. I was just going to say that, you know, just like similar to, uh, you know, Godzilla was a reaction to the, uh, you know, nuclear attack on Japan. Right. And it's almost blatant, you know, like, uh, uh, way, no doubt there is going to be some horror that comes yeah. out of this situation. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Not a doubt. Like isolation. Yep. Yep. And I'm actually, I'm trying to think of it myself even right now, you know, like what would I want to, you know, how do you, without it being too obvious, you know, uh, how right. do you, how do, would you, what are the fears that we have right now and how do you, uh, you know, metaphorically represent them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's exactly. it's weird asking yourself like, what am I most afraid of in this moment? Yeah. It can be hard to articulate, right? right? It is. Yeah. Well, I know that one of my fears yeah. is. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's almost gone. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's a genuine, identifiable fear. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Mm. Ryan this, is, this, Ryan, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. That was really fun. You're well, very, it's very generous to, to give your time to let really, just, Thank you. Yeah. You know, we, we wanted thank for the you. last year, we kept saying we really just wanted so badly to go to your studio. Well, come and do it and again. Just, yeah, once we, we, we want to, because you, you, you're afraid of showing us, like, the mess of the workplace. That's the world I live in. I love seeing, like, plaster chips lying on the floor and latex over here and paint over there that's oh the well, then that's you're the gonna love it here yeah <laughs> yes, because it's real i mean you know it, it it's part of that it's part of the whole process and yeah. and you've just been wonderful in allowing us a little bit of access this year yeah to, uh, thanks some, very much some of your well, world thank, there. You. thank you thank you this is really fun i love talking this kind of stuff so no, and we and and you know uh, it's really funny like dave said when we when you did your did work, applied the makeup for this movie down in Owatonna, and then we just follow you because you were such a genuine, friendly guy when you were applying the makeup, and yes. you know we seemingly we hit it off. So it was really a really nice experience all the way around, yeah, and I mean, I, um, yep. and it was nice to you know as the well, years have great. gone by follow your career as such, you know, when we'd catch little snippets about something. And, and of course that sort of thing is much e easier now with the internet. You can, it, you know, it's not like before yeah. where it was so difficult and now you can find those things out or you see them or, you know, there's social media. So uh, it's, it's much easier. Yeah. Well, thank you again for even being interested in caring. And again, you guys were great to work with, uh, um, you know, uh, my attitude with 
doing makeup is that, you know, uh, again, most people want to do it, you know, but like, it doesn't still mean that you shouldn't make the experience a great one for as much as you can, you know, yeah. but it can be very draining, you know, like, uh, it can be emotionally because you're giving, 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 you know what I mean? And stuff. And, you know, but, sure. um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it was fun and you guys are great. And again, when maybe this comes back down or maybe we can do a mask or something, but come to the studio sometime for sure. Have a great evening. Yeah, you too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, let's do it again. And yeah, maybe in real absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. And good night, everybody. We're going to call this one quits and we'll okay. see you on the flip side.